in this video you'll be able to understand the five different states of power system the five different operating states of power system what are inequality constants what are equality constraints the different states and which is suitable for the operation of power system so i'm uh, professor mohan bs working as assistant professor in department of triple e HABIT. So to understand the block diagram and the various parameters, we should know what are E and I quantities here. The system operation is governed by equality and inequality constraints, where E is with respect to power balance between generation and load. That is how much of generation and how much of load we have. That constraint is represented as E. And what are inequality constraints? All your electrical parameters, such as operating parameters, voltage, generation limits, frequency, limit of the limit of the each equipments, right? So these are represented as inequality constraints. For the purpose of analyzing the power system security and design control, it's helpful to conceptualize, classify the system operating conditions into five different states. So let's see one by one. What are these five different states, which are in green, orange? red purple and white color and the mark represents its flow right from what state to what state we can we can move one can move from different states so let's see one by one the first state is called a secure state where e and i are equal that is it is governed by equality and inequality constraints where both are equal that is we have adequate generation as well as we have equal demand Thus, there is no overload in the system and the system can withstand any contingencies and that state is called as normal state. Next is called as, as you can guess by the term, there is alert state. Now, so preventive control actions has to be taken here and only then it moves from alert states to normal state. So here we say that equality and inequality constraints are balanced. However, they might place some emergency state in the sense the reserve margins are reduced therefore there is possibility that some inequality constraints may be violated that might place the system in emergency state so this is a modern this is actually an insecure state so if preventive action controls are taken the system moves from alert states to normal if not it moves to emergency state so emergency control actions has to be taken here else the system will move to extreme emergency so if emergency control actions are not taken it moves to extreme emergency if they're taken it moves to an alert and from there on it moves to normal state so here in an emergency state as you can see we have e and i bar so e and i bar that means the imbalance between the generation and the load at the system levels or at local levels so there are different reasons for different reasons for emergency state this could be because of instability due to energy buildup in the system and we'll see some more points in the upcoming slides so from this state if we move on to the next stage it's called extreme emergency here both there is your equality and inequality constraints are not satisfied it's imbalance between generation and load and various operating parameters, voltage, frequency, LDK quantities are not met. Thus, the system moves to extreme emergency case. And if not taken, if emergency control actions are not taken, the system will move to blackout. It's completely shut down of the interconnected power system. Now, so from extreme emergency state, so this, this state is also called as a secure state. So emergency control action has to be taken, else system will have contingency effects, cascading effects, and will have a larger blackout. So from this extreme emergency, if control actions have taken, then the system moves to restorative, where the system is still insecure. So restorative, as the system is still not reached normal, it has some shortfalls with respect to imbalance between generation and load. Once these problems are taken care by preventive control actions, then the system moves to normal state. So let's see one by one. So, in normal state, as discussed, E and I both are satisfied. Generation is adequate to meet the demand. 
without being overloaded. System operates is secure and it can withstand any contingencies here. Other state. This state also equality and inequality constraints are satisfied of our we saw i macro, we saw i bar here. That means there must be some reduced in spinning reserves. So possibility that inequality constraints may be violated that might place the system into emergency state. And here what action has to be taken care? So preemptive control action has to be taken care. How by increasing the reserves, restoring the system from alert to normal state. If the resistance is very severe, it leads to in extreme or extreme emergency state that might result directly from an alert state. So if the disturbance is very severe, it leads directly to extreme emergency, thus bypassing your emergency state. Next two are emergency state and in extreme state. Due to several severe disturbance, the system may enter an emergency state. This could be because of imbalance between generation and load, either the either the system level or at the local level. So there are a few reasons you know, how uh, emergency state might occur. Instability due to energy buildup in the system after a fault. There is no strong control measures being taken. If these measures are not taken on time, the system stability may be under threat and the system may eventually break down and go to in extremist state or extreme emergency state. So in this state, both equality and inequality constraints are violated. The violation of equality constraints implies that the generation and the load do not match. And your uh, inequality constraint implies that there are no spinning reserves and all your electrical quantities parameter your frequency generation limit right etc they're not meeting their standards so extra emergency measures must be taken to prevent cascading outages total grid collapse and widespread blackout so let's see the last state restorative state so this is a transitional state where inequality constraints are satisfied by the emergency control actions however your equality constraints are not satisfied and thus not reaching your normal state. So we can have a transition either to an alert state or to normal state. So if it's going to alert state, so preventive control action has to be taken so that the system moves to normal state. So thank you for watching the video. Kindly do subscribe to the channel to enhance your knowledge.